Another day, another story about people leaving California. California lost a net balance, 425,000 people. The Golden State lost about 211,000 residents. You had neighbors move out of your neighborhood recently? Well, the California exodus certainly continues. Our state population dropped by half a million people over a two-year period. California is a land of contrasts. America's largest economy is home to 39 million U.S. citizens, world-changing tech companies, and is arguably the most culturally influential in shaping modern America. However, America's richest state is, somehow, also its poorest. The Food Bank and over 700 partner agencies used to serve 300,000 people each month before the 2020 global incident that we aren't allowed to name. Now they're serving 900,000 individuals, three times more people than before, nearly one-tenth of L.A. County's entire population. The state is suffering a major demographic decline. Over half a million people left due to rising housing costs and crises, immense income inequality, and the highest poverty rate in crime-filled cities in the nation. For the first time in 170 years, California is facing such a population loss. Not only people, but companies are moving their headquarters out of California at an astonishing pace. Tesla, Oracle, HP, CBRE, Charles Schwab, and Palantir are just a few companies that have already left. Between 2018 and 2022, over 352 companies moved their headquarters to other states in many dimensions, including taxes, regulations, litigation costs, labor costs, energy and utility costs, and employee cost of living. But why is California facing one of the largest exodus in American history? The golden state of California isn't gold anymore. But why is this happening, and is it too late to be saved? California is the third largest state in the United States, bounded by the Pacific Ocean in the west and bordered by Oregon, Nevada, and Arizona. It shares a border with Mexico in the south. California's geography is rich, complex, and varied. California has four main geographic regions where five major types of nature can be seen up close. The coast, the Central Valley, the mountains, and the desert. The Central Valley is California's agricultural heartland, which supplies 8% of U.S. agricultural output and produces one quarter of the nation's food. California has a $49 billion agricultural industry generates at least $100 billion in related economic activity. Its geography is so rich that large-scale production of gold started with the California Gold Rush in 1848. California has produced more gold than any other state, more than 106 million ounces from 1848 through 1965. When the United States took over in 1846, the population of California was made up of about 8,000 Mexican Californians and between 150,000 and 200,000 Native Americans. Over the next 50 years, California's population skyrocketed and formed, with Americans of European heritage becoming the dominant ethnic group, though Asian and Latin American groups continued to persist. The Gold Rush California made California the most populous state in the nation. New immigrants caused cities to grow along the California coasts, including San Jose, San Francisco, Oakland, Los Angeles, Long Beach, Santa Ana, Irvine, Anaheim, and San Diego. Additionally, with the development of Silicon Valley in the late 1970s, California became a world leader in manufacturing computers and electronics. If California were a country, it would immediately be a global force to be reckoned with. California's GDP in 2022 was $3.6 trillion, representing 14.3% of the U.S. economy. It would be the fifth largest economy in the world and more productive than India and the United Kingdom. America has had the strongest, most dynamic economy in the world for the last 80 years because of California. Millions of people today, and in the past once-in-a-lifetime dream of the California dream, in the notion of the American dream, a lucky place, a land of opportunity and good fortune. However, California's economy is shrinking. It is no longer on top GDP by its population. Not only is the cost of living skyrocketing, but more recently, California's job growth is far below the national average. Year over year, California's employment has increased just 0.1%, whereas it is up 1.5% in the rest of the country. Put differently, if California was performing as well as the rest of the country's economy, California would have added about 300,000 jobs in the last year, 
not just 30,000. The wealthiest state is among the lowest ranking states in the country in terms of job creation. One of the largest banks, Silicon Valley Bank, got bankrupt recently, which used to play a key role in funding venture capital and creating jobs. California continues to be near the bottom in the rankings of all states in terms of traffic congestion, poverty, school performance, air and water quality, infrastructure, and housing costs. Since 2000, California has experienced its slowest rates of population growth ever recorded. From 2010 to 2020, California's population grew by 5.8%, or 2.4 million people. This was slower than the rate of growth in the rest of the nation of 6.8%. These recent rates are dramatically lower than the growth throughout the 20th century. From 1900 to 1950, California's population rose from under 2 million to 10 million. It more than tripled in the last half of the century, reaching 34 million by 2000, and its growth rate was much higher than that of the rest of the United States. In the last two years, California lost 600,000 people. Most of the loss occurred during the first year of the pandemic. An increase in deaths, almost 50,000, sharp declines in international migration, and a rise in residents moving to other states account for the losses. However, it is not the poor who are leaving the state. According to IRS data, people earning less than $25,000 accounted for only 14% of the increased net domestic migration from 2012 to 2019, while those earning more than $100,000 accounted for 38% of the exodus, and the pace of departure was significantly higher for those earning far more. Another major challenge is population growth. Between 2010 and 2019, the Latino population in California increased at only half the national pace, while the black population in California increased by only 0.8%, which is much less than the national rate of 7.2% and even less than the rates in Florida and Texas. In San Francisco and Los Angeles, the number of African-American households has decreased during the last 20 years. Additionally, the flow of immigrants in the 21st century is also lower than in the 20th century. California is home to the highest number of immigrants, almost 10.5 million, 23% of the foreign-born population nationwide. The vast majority of California's immigrants were born in Latin America, 49%, or Asia, 39%. In the first decade of this century, the population of immigrants increased by 12%, 1.1 million. But in the past 10 years, the increase was only 5%, about 500,000. But in the 1990s, California's immigrant population grew by 2.4 million, a 37% increase. This fall off in international immigration has contributed to the recent slowdown of California's overall population growth. At the same time, the state is seeing a decline in the young, restless new arrivals who have traditionally driven California's innovative and entrepreneurial economy. An analysis of IRS data from 2012 to 2019 indicates that 85% of those leaving are in their prime earning years of 25 to 64. Therefore, the days when California could depend on forming brain power appear to be at an end. The cost of living in California is 39% higher than the national average. Housing is 102% higher than the national average, while utilities are 22% higher. Regular commodities are 16% higher than the national average prices. Only Hawaii has higher prices and consumer goods need to cross the Pacific Ocean to get there. The major crisis California is facing right now, which is causing population exodus, is the housing crisis. In 2021, the average home price exceeded $800,000. For the state's expanding population, some analysts estimate that California needs around 3 million more houses. However, for decades, strict zoning laws have allowed developers to build mostly single-family homes. According to the recent Berkeley poll, the housing cost is making people want to move, with more than 70% of Californians considering them a very serious issue. Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego, and San Jose have income-adjusted median home values that are more than twice as high as those of significant metro areas outside of California since 1970. Even the cheaper interior markets of Sacramento, Fresno, and Riverside San Bernardino are becoming more and more unaffordable in comparison to metros outside of California. 
According to one recent study, the median family in San Jose or San Francisco would need 125 years and 150 years in Los Angeles to collect a down payment. In Atlanta or Houston, the figure is 12 years. The state's disapproval of suburban and ex-urban expansion, a key driver of its high real estate prices, directly raises housing costs and rents and poses a threat to the worker supply for even the strongest remaining sectors of its economy. The living costs causing in-state migration, which is shuffling California's demographics. The state's middle class is leaving coastal metros such as LA and San Francisco and moving to inland desert and mountain communities. California is also experiencing a home insurance crisis due to extreme natural disasters. Wildfires have burned nearly 10 million acres of forest and destroyed 39,000 homes in California over the last five years, providing a glimpse at just how dire the state's climate crisis has become. Yet, at a time when it's more vital than ever for homeowners to have adequate insurance coverage, now, two companies, State Farm and Allstate, have announced they will no longer offer new home insurance policies in the state. Insurance companies paid a record $15.4 billion in losses in 2017 and $13.6 billion in 2018 due to the two most destructive wildfire seasons in state history. Residential construction costs are up roughly 34% since the start of the pandemic due to ongoing supply chain issues and labor shortages further complicating matters for both California insurers and homeowners. Right now, several companies have stopped writing new businesses in California until market conditions improve. This means California residents won't be able to purchase a new home insurance policy or switch companies for the foreseeable future. All these factors made California sixth of the nation's worst markets for first-time home buyers. The cost of living is also becoming unaffordable for renters in California. With 45% of housing units occupied by renters, California is the state with the highest percentage of renters nationwide. Between 2000 and 2019, the state's average rent jumped 35%, more than twice the national average and far above the growth in average state incomes. If one makes only a minimum wage, one would theoretically have to work 177 hours per week to afford an average one-bedroom rental in San Francisco. On Skid Row, part of downtown Los Angeles, the starting price for a single room is more than twice the minimal government allowance for people with disabilities. No wonder homelessness continues to rise dramatically. Over 171,000 Californians were counted as experiencing homelessness in early 2022. The recent rise in Bay Area homelessness is especially alarming due to the proliferation of unsheltered homelessness. An unsheltered homeless individual is anyone who resides in a place not meant for human habitation, such as a tent, car, park, sidewalk, or abandoned building. Between 2010 and 2020, the number of unsheltered homeless Bay Area residents increased by a staggering 63%. California has one of the biggest income disparities in the U.S., surpassing all but three other states in 2021. The highest-earning families earned 11 times more money than the lowest-earning households, $291,000 versus $26,000. Compared to 1980, families at the top made seven times more money than those at the bottom. Wealth is more unevenly distributed than income. In California, 20% of all net worth is concentrated in the 30 wealthiest zip codes, home to just 2% of Californians. Californians are concerned. According to a survey, 71% believe that the gap between rich and poor is increasing. A similar share thinks the government should do more to reduce that gap. One of the reasons why California is so expensive and everyone is leaving is because of the high tax rates. The state is among the highest taxed states in the nation and it has the highest income tax rates. The top rate is 13.3%. The next closest top tax rate is in Oregon at 9.9%. However, Oregon does not have a sales tax. California has the 10th highest sales tax. What is remarkable about the California income tax isn't just that it has the highest rate. It is how little income it takes just above $52,000 to qualify for the California rate of 9.3%. On the other hand, for more than a decade, Less than 150,000 of California's 35-plus million people have paid half of all of its income tax, a highly imbalanced system. 
According to SmartAsset.com, California has the highest debt-to-income ratio in the country. Now, many might think California needs all of those taxes, given its infrastructure deficit and debt. The problem with that notion is that those prolonged high taxes, debt burdens, and regulations limit California's economic future. Given the predicted tax raise that must be coming, why would companies decide to settle in California in the future? In the last three years, California lost 11 Fortune 1000 companies and 352 headquarters relocations. Some of the more notable companies to leave California are Apple, whose headquarters moved from Santa Clara to Austin, Texas. Nestle USA moved from Los Angeles to Arlington, Virginia, and Oracle San Mateo to Austin, Texas. The most popular destination is Texas, followed by Tennessee, Nevada, Florida, and Arizona. Each of these states has consistently better rated business climates, low tax rates, and lower costs of living than California. The Tax Foundation ranks California 48th out of 50 on its state business tax climate rankings. Another reason why many businesses are leaving the state is because California is also the state with the most regulations in the nation. Its regulation text contains about 396,000 regulatory restrictions, making it the most restrictive. With slightly under 300,000, New York comes in second. In all other respects, regulations increase a company's operating costs and additional regulations slow economic growth. California doesn't implode. It's a victim of its own political mismanagement. California is almost a nation unto itself, with the explicit goal of transforming the entire United States into something similar to California. The progressive elites who rule California have been acting like an independent nation. This model is a modern form of feudalism. The debt of the government speaks for itself. According to a 2017 study, California state and local governments owe $1.3 trillion as of June 30, 2015. In other words, that $1.3 trillion in debt is the amount to which California governments admit. Other studies believe it to be more. Indeed, one study says it is actually $2.3 trillion, and a recent Hoover Institute stated that there is over $1 trillion in pension liability alone, or $76,884 per household. With ongoing inflation, Governor Gavin Newsom revealed in January that the state would run a $22.5 billion deficit in the 2023-24 fiscal year, a sharp decline from the $100 billion surplus the previous year. When Governor Newsom took office last year, he promised housing and homelessness his major policy priorities. He proposed to create a Marshall Plan for housing by building 3.5 million new housing units by 2025. Housing is even less affordable today than it was when Newsom took office. As far as a Marshall Plan for housing goes, there was less new housing built last year than in the previous two years. The idea that the state will create 3.5 million new units by 2025 is completely unrealistic. Passing legislation to increase housing should be simple politically, and the state Senate offered a bill that accomplished what Newsom had requested. The law would have cut housing costs and improved availability. There is an immense amount of open land, especially close to Silicon Valley, some of which might be developed. Unfortunately, SB 50 failed twice. On SB 50, Newsom stayed agnostic, and he made no alternate suggestions. California will become unaffordable due to this political failure and hidden objectives, giving residents little choice but to depart. The exodus has been accelerating substantially, with no sign of reversing course. One may ask, why does population decline matter? California has the highest population in the nation. Actually, California's future depends on its population. Long seen as a paragon of youthful energy, California is inexorably getting older. From 2010 to 2018, California aged 50% more rapidly than the rest of the country. By 2036, old Californians will be a larger share of the population than people 19 and under. Although tech, Hollywood, agriculture, and tourism are certainly impacting the state's economic output, the single biggest factor driving California's economic success is the size of its population. The correlation between these two factors is a staggering 98.2%. That's why even though California has a diverse economy, it is not so diverse that it can continue to rely on its historically large GDP while its population continues to decline.
If not major actions are not taken immediately to make California affordable and sustainable for working class people, then California's doom will be inevitable.